Hey everyone, once been here with another battle report. So, brought my empire versus an ogre army. A really, inter really interesting game, uh, for two reasons. The, the the minor reason is just the way we had the board set up with a huge. I mean, it's just a tower, but it's kind of a big piece of terrain right in the middle of the table, and then this uh, river running underneath it and right through the table. So, uh, one of those things. Even though there isn't a lot of terrain, the terrain was. Uh, it was fairly impactful in terms of how it affected potential combats and movement and stuff like that. Now, more importantly, the 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 guy I'm going against is is preparing to uh, come to a tournament that I am organizing, and in that tournament, we're using the Swedish comp system, and so he, he's trying to to make an ogre list that'll score a 20 on the Swedish comp. He couldn't quite do it. I think this list is like a 19, but it is the softest ogre list you can imagine. <laughs> so uh, I think he's approaching it trying to get, I think our best hobbyist is uh, that award is is really impacted by your comp score as well as painting and sportsmanship. And he always does uh, really well in those two things. And uh, so he's kind of going for the best hobbyist award, <laughs> I think. I think it's likely that he might get best, best sportsman with this list. It is a soft, soft list. So uh, running through it, he's got a unit of yetis on the right. Uh, currently, they're being proxied with some with some bulls. Um, anyway, he's got a, a stone horn and then a thunder tusk, a unit a saber a saber tusk pack with a hunter. And I don't know everything that he has on him, but I know that he has a weapon that that negates all armor saves. And we weren't necessarily playing a closed list, but at the same time, we weren't really looking at each other's list either. Uh, behind the Saber Tusk pack is a unit of bulls with three characters. So he's got his general. It looks like the tyrant, but he's actually only a bruiser. Uh, he's got two butchers. Both of them are level two with Lord of the Great Maw. Uh, one of them has plus one to dispel. The other one, I don't remember what he had. Uh, but I want you to appreciate that there's no battle standard bearer. There's no crown of command. It's just that. And no matter how they're modeled, they're just bulls. There's no great weapons or anything. I don't even know if bulls can have great weapons, but anyway. And then there's another a unit of bulls to the left, and that's it. He's got a gorger, and that's his list. So uh, we were both hugging opposite corners, and um, I wasn't really concerned about it because my plan is to have my knights go all the way around the building, take their time, and come in for some late-game heroics. Um, I plan on reforming my blocks of infantry. I want to line up against the river, so if he charges me, uh, he's in the river, uh, just to give a slightly added benefit. But for the most part, it just looks like that. I'm not even running down my list because you really should know what I have. Um, I'll go through characters um, as we get there. But basically, there is an engineer. I like putting the war machines in the river because why not? And it look kind of funny. Uh, the engineer is right between them. Uh, I've got an arch lector general, a warrior priest in with the knights. I've got a level four lure of light wizard with a dispel scroll and a battle standard bear. So... Uh, he vanguards up, and already, I mean, I guess he can't charge my Hellblaster in the first turn uh, if he vanguards, uh, but already I'm realizing how the Hellblaster Folly Gun is, like, pretty far up there. So, uh, he wins the roll to go first. He goes exactly as you can see. Uh, now, one thing I was definitely thinking about this is he doesn't have magic that I'm too concerned about. I've got a level 4. He only has level 2s. So I've got a scroll. Uh, his shooting, I think, is inconsequential. And I thought his his pack was fairly close to my Demigriff Knights, and I'd love just to charge in there, and I think I'd eventually win it, and I would also be able to tie them up for a while. Now keep in mind, I didn't know that he had the, the no armor save weapon, so had I known that, I wouldn't be as anxious to get my Demigriffs in there. So nothing really happened on his turn, so uh, I go to mine. I start off really not playing the, the Steam Tank very smart. I, uh, I went ahead 3d6, and then in hindsight, I really didn't need to go that far. I was thinking that if I got if I rolled really high, I might be able to get an impact. Um, I would get a charge and all my impact hits on that thunder, on that uh, stone horn. Um, but anyway, it's, it is as you can see, and I still have one steam point left to shoot the cannon. Uh, the demigriffs tried to charge the uh, the saber tusks. I think I needed a seven or something like that, and uh, failed it. So everything else is as you can see. Yeah, there's the failed charge. Cowards. And over here, the only the only bad thing up and over here was the uh, great swords uh, failed their swift reform, um, which isn't a big deal. I actually, the way I have this lined up, I really don't know what to do with the great swords. In hindsight, I should have taken them to that watchtower and and uh, entered it as soon as I could, and then just popped out on the other side. 
but whatever. So uh, let's see the magic phase. You can see I got some a buff off on the demigriffs and a buff on the uh, hell blaster. I think I put the hell blaster at minus one to hit. I it's really kind of stupid. And then I forgot to move the engineer. So if he charges the the uh, hell blaster, he's going to overrun to my engineer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really playing fast and loose because I'm looking at his list and I just I don't see how he can beat me with it. <laughs> anyway, this picture showing the Hellblaster opened up at his Saber Test pack and killed a couple of them. Didn't really do a whole lot. Or there it is, one or the other. Oh, this one's showing the cannon opened up on his on his Thunder Tusk and the Thunder Tusk is now gone. I think it took my Steam Tank and my cannon, but between the two of them we got it. And we go to Ogre's turn two. His Gorger comes on behind my lines. I'm really not worried about it because I have the Hellblaster Volley Gun that can shoot at him. Of course, that's assuming that his pa his Saber Tusks don't charge my Hellblaster. He tries to. I think he only needs a seven, and he fails it. <laughs> on Swift Stride. <laughs> you know what? It's a theme all game long. Trying to make easy charges and not be able to make it. Uh, that's huge, because now not only does he not kill my Hellblaster, but my Hellblaster can turn around and shoot his Gorger. And he's set up for counter charges. Uh, takes his Yetis and his Stonehorn into my uh, Steam Tank, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, I think he may even kill it over time, and I just I just don't care. It doesn't matter. It, as long as it holds them up uh, long enough, I'll be okay. So overall, it looks like that. Uh, after combat, does three wounds to it, mainly, for, I think, from impact hits from that Stonehorn 3d3 or something like that. Um, pretty brutal. Go to Empire turn two. So my Demigriffs finally decided to, to make the charge into the Saber Tusks. Um, my, my Steam Tank, kind of a serendipitous thing happened there, I actually misfired. And, uh, and, so, and then the misfire result just meant that I couldn't do my grinding attack. And I was like, dang it, that's the best thing I have. So I've got three steam points, and the only thing I can do with it is put it into the flaming attack instead of the grinding. Uh, so I'll talk more about that later. Um, otherwise, really, you can see whatever's going on. I kind of like how things are working out. I think the demigriffs will take care of the hounds. After that, I really just want the demigriffs to get out of the way. I want to park my uh, halberdiers right at the base of that river. And then he's got to charge me in it, or I'm happy to charge him over it. Either way, there's that. It looks like I have a banner, but this unit is doesn't have any kind of command. Uh, yeah, so the the Hellblaster opens up in the Gorger, and I think I don't even quite kill it. And um, I think it takes my cannon to finish it off. But either way, the Gorger's, Gorger's gone now. And uh, after combat, you can see I've he's done a few more wounds to my steam tank. Uh... Let's see, I think he did one wound to my steam tank. I was down to seven, now I'm at six. He did one wound to me, and he had a flank. Um, I opened up with the, the flame attack, the breath attack, at strength four against the yetis, and I did five wounds. So I actually won combat. And I, I'm thinking with the steam tank, I never expect to win combat on my... Um, to win combat, because the grinding doesn't happen during the combat phase, it happens during the movement phase. So I'm actually thinking that I might start uh, instead of grinding, there might be situations where I do the breath attack instead. Uh, both these units stuck, but, um, you know, it wasn't a foregone conclusion. I mean, I could have broken one of them and had them run away. Not that I could get the points, but at least, you know, it would have slowed them down. Uh, Demigriffs lose model. You can see a couple of buffs I have on there for the Lore of Light. Um, but I, I know that I did. I took one wound from Dangerous Terrain for the river, and then he did two wounds to me with his No Armor Save Hunter. Uh, I killed just a bunch of Saber Tusks and uh, beat him, overran, and got the charge into his General's unit. So, Ogre's turn three. Uh, really, everything he has is already tied up in combat except for the bulls that have to turn and face my knights. Uh, after combat over here, yeah, he does a few more wounds, and he's got my Steam Tank down to three. So, at this point, uh, I, again, I don't really care if he kills a Steam Tank. I just don't want him to kill it on my turn, because then he can charge me on his. <laughs> it just makes me feel better if I can, uh, if he kills me on his turn, that on my turn I can shoot his guys or something like that. Uh, after combat here, yeah, kind of an epic fail. I, I tried to put some wounds on his general. I could only do two, and uh, he's got a four-up ward, and uh, so I couldn't quite get the wounds there, but uh, he, uh, you can see he killed one Demigriff Knight. I have one Demigriff left, uh, full strength. Those two wound markers are on his general, not my guy. And, uh, yeah, he stuck. So, 
I would have rather have broken and got out of the way so that my halberdiers could have charged on my turn. But, whatever. So, Empire turn three. Uh, if you look at the top left, I move my knights up. Uh, I can't march them because of the river, so I just move them seven inches. Um, basically, my opponent needs to roll a ten, I think, to make his charge. Uh, maybe a nine, nine or ten, something like that. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm confident on my next turn, I can charge. I'll risk the dangerous terrain. I'm okay with that. And um, we'll be good to go. I uh, park my halberdiers right at the river. My great swords I just reformed to go bus formation, and because now it finally occurred to me that the the watchtower, by the way, is a building, but the steps we, we're counting that just as a hill, and so um, I just reformed so that I could fit in between there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's showing. Uh, we go over here. My my cannon opens up, and I target. Um, just to the left of his front rank of bulls that are facing my knights and just hit it perfectly. I rolled like a two and then it bounced ten, something like that. I mean, just absolutely perfectly. It hit all four. Now, because of the rules for Monsters Infantry, we had to roll for each one. Like, I had to wound one and do at least three wounds because if I fail to kill one, the, the cannonball stops. It almost works like a bolt thrower in that regard. Uh, but every time, I, I wounded it and then did three plus wounds and killed all four of them. Took out half of that unit with one cannonball shot. He fails his panic and runs almost off the board. So, way to go, Cannon. After combat, uh, this almost worked out perfectly. He um, he did two wounds to my Demigriff Knight, so I have one wound left, and he doesn't catch me. So I've got one guy with one wound who's saving those points. But the problem is, I didn't bounce through my unit, so I'm, so I'm kind of right there in front of my Halberdiers. Uh, if it were my turn next, that would be really a hassle because it's his turn. Uh, if his ogres want to charge anything, they've got to charge him first, and they'll go ahead and push him out of the way. If you look on the right, uh, you can see he only did uh, one more wound to my steam tank, so he's really hit or miss. Sometimes he does several, sometimes he just does one. So ogres turn four. His his bulls charge my demigriff knight, and I flee. I have to flee, and then they tried to redirect to my hell blaster as a way of getting around everything else and they fail it. <laughs> that Hellblaster has some kind of curse, or blessing, I guess, for my for my sake, that anybody who wants to charge it, they're failing it. They, they can't reach it. <laughs> so, now what that does, it looks like I've got an easy charge with my Halberdiers, but what I have is a really, really easy charge with my great swords into their flank. I mean, I shouldn't say really, really easy, but, you know, I've got to roll maybe a four or five, and my great swords are in the flank, and that's never a good place to be. Uh, so that's what that failed charge did for him. Uh, his yetis actually took the last wounds off of my steam tank. And so again, at least this was his turn. So now before he can charge me on my turn, I can at least try to shoot him. So Empire turn four. Yeah, great swords charge the flank of his general's unit and he runs away. Um, I don't know if I tried to charge anything else. It looks like my halberdiers tried to charge something. I don't know. Everything ended up as you can see it. Yeah, there's that. Um, cannon opens up on the uh, Stonehorn and does three wounds to it, which, you know, of course, I'd rather kill it, but um, at least with three wounds down, uh, there's only three to go, and so he's more manageable. Uh, go to Ogre's turn five. His general's unit fails to rally, which actually was a bummer for me because, really, he, he should rally, and so now he's going to rally even farther away, so he's more likely to be able to save those points. His... Um, his Thunder Tusk tries to charge my Hell Blaster and fails. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I find that hilarious. Uh, nothing can charge my Hell Blaster. Uh, the Yetis just move up. They, I mean, he knows I'm going to shoot the heck out of him, but what else is he going to do with those guys? So he's trying to come up and at least get some points where he can. Um, I mean, he really doesn't have a chance of winning the game at this point. Uh, Empire turn five. Halberdiers go into the flank of his of his stone horn. You look my knights, I just march them up as much as possible so that uh, if his general's unit rallies, I can almost certainly get the charge with them. Yeah, there's that. Uh, Hellblaster opens up. I think I did the cannon first and, and did some wounds, and the Hellblaster opens up. It takes him down to, what, I guess there's a total of four wounds left, but there's four wounds that, you know, now he's pro I think he's going to charge my cannon and should make it, and I don't care that there's only four wounds left. He's going to slaughter my cannon. Uh, kill the Thunder Tusk. I did exactly 
I think three boons to it, and then I reform in bus formation because that way it kind of moved me a little bit closer to his general's unit. And that piece of terrain you see is not impassable, it's just a hard cover. Uh, so I want to be able to charge him with my knights and with my uh, halberdiers. So Ogre's turn six as Yetis come into my cannon, trying to seek, trying to get some revenge there. Uh, his general's unit rallies. And for turn six, my knights fail to rally. These guys have tra have traversed the whole board, and right at the crucial turn six, the only reason they existed was for late game heroics, and they fail the charge. <laughs> Man. Um, anyway, the halberdiers get in there. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I uh, I sure would have liked to have those knights sitting. And uh, I don't know if you can see my warrior priest model is kind of. When I reformed him, I didn't want to reform all the guys, and so I just kind of turned it and I put him on the front. And he's actually resting on the top of a couple halberdiers. It looked pretty epic in person. The picture, I'm not sure, is conveying it. Um, anyway, if you see those tokens by my halberdiers, one means I'm rerolling to wound, and the other one means I have a five up ward. So that actually really helps out. Uh, he's not going to be steadfast. I take that back, though. In his magic phase, he was able to make them stubborn. So really, it doesn't matter how much I beat him, but I just need to make sure I beat him. And then either he's going to make us stubborn or he's not. And I beat him, and he does not make us stubborn. And then he just he runs off the board. And, you know, if he didn't run off the board, I was probably going to catch him. So either way, I probably had those points. So the game ended like that. His um, his yetis, of course, killed my cannon, ran off the table, so they were safe. So he, he maintained points for the yetis. Otherwise, it, he was tabled. Uh, I lost I lost a cannon. I don't think I lost anything else. Um, oh, and a steam tank. Cannon and steam tank. So pretty convincing victory for Empire. Uh, you know, we were joking about it afterwards. I mean, how soft his list was. I mean, I certainly didn't play a brilliant game. I, I had my great swords, never saw action. My knights never did anything. Really, I fought him with le a little more than half an army and still beat him pretty convincingly just because, I mean, it, again, it wasn't my gameplay but just a soft, soft list. So uh, kudos to him for, for being bold with the Zogers and seeing what he can do. Um, I wish him the best in the tournament. Anyway, that's this game. Hope you enjoyed it.